Welcome to Flat Ride of the Week, episode 28. Today we'll be looking at the long requested ride known as a Larson Loop, though it's sometimes called a Fireball, Super Loop, or Ring of Fire. We also have Elliot joining us today. He operated Fireball at Six Flags New England back in 2017 and has a lot of knowledge about the ride. As usual, if we forget anything or say something that's incorrect, please correct us in the comment section below. Let's get started. And as usual, starting with the history. While the modern version of the ride comes in a few different variations under multiple names, the ride actually evolved a lot over the years. Larson International was founded in 1965 as a tractor and agricultural machine production company. In 1970, they were looking for a way to expand their business. And so, with the help of Walter House, they debuted the Super Loop. This ride had an enclosed 20-person gondola with a large single-position padded lap bar in each seat and a cage around the riders. The operator, who has manual control over the ride via the use of a joystick, moves the ride by moving the inertia ring, which is the conveyor belt-like ring that runs on the inside of the track and is attached to the ride vehicle. This inertia ring is powered by hydraulic motors at the base of the ride. The original ride traveled a 55-foot or 23-meter tall loop. All of the traveling versions of the ride are self-assembling by the use of a hydraulic ram arm that lifts sections of the loop into place. A worker must then scale the loop to securely fasten each section, as well as securing the steel support cables that are used for lateral support. This design allows the ride to be transported on only one trailer. All versions of the ride have a height requirement of 48 inches. The original ride proved to be hugely popular, and in conjunction with the Chance Zipper we covered in a prior episode, this gave American Fairs in the 1970s a huge boost in popularity, as well as leading to both rides and fairgrounds as a whole in America gaining a reputation for out of control, basic, and a little sketchy at times, but extremely fun and intense rides. Then in 1980, Larson introduced the first major modification to the Super Loop, named the Ring of Fire. This ride had a new computer-controlled lighting system that was placed over the entire ring, as well as a redesigned inertia ring to slightly reduce the noise and maintenance. These rides in their original form are some of the oldest Larson loops still found regularly operating today, and they are quite rare in their original form. In 1998, Larson introduced the Fireball. This version came with a new modernized ride vehicle that used over-the-shoulder restraints and thus did not have a cage around the riders. Many older Super Loops and Rings of Fire rides were updated with the new gondola. The Fireball was also slightly taller, sitting at 59 feet or 18 meters. Most of the current traveling Larson Loops are Fireball models. You can easily recognize most Fireball rides compared to other newer models as the Fireball versions feature cables extended from the ride for lateral support, and these are only present on transportable models such as the Fireball. The Fireball was designed to be portable only, however some have been installed permanently such as the one at Indiana Beach. Over 100 Larson built versions of the Fireball have been built over the years, with a few being built under license by other manufacturers outside the US. In the early 2010s, Larson introduced what would become the most well-known Six Flags version of the ride, the 22-meter Giant Loop. This ride featured a larger ride vehicle with a 24-person capacity and a 73-foot or 22-meter tall loop. This version also came with the option of a computer-controlled ride cycle instead of a joystick. The versions with a computer-controlled cycle can be recognized by the counterweight on the opposite end of the inertia ring to the vehicle. Uh, this was the first version of the ride to offer a optional, electrical unlocking version of the restraints, rather than the air pressure needed on the older models. You'll see with a lot of the older ones, the operator has to hook an air pressure hose up to the ride vehicle to unlock restraints. Um, this option, of course, is only available with the computer-controlled versions of the ride, so all the joystick versions will still use air pressure. Uh, but it does save the operator from having to connect the air compressor or the compressed air up to the ride unit. In the late 2010s, Larson introduced the Giga Loop. This version of the ride has a 101 foot or 30.8 meter tall loop and a larger 32 pass passenger ride vehicle. This version is only available with computer control, 
with many of these rides being programmed by the famed Irvine Andre Engineering or IOE. This model is also only available with electrically unlocking restraints. Due to the added electrical components on the ride vehicle, this ride must also be parked upside down at night to prevent the electronics from getting wet. Uh, the IOE versions of the ride have an option on the touchscreen of the ride to park it in this position and you will often see it parked like this. A lot of people get a little freaked out because it's stuck upside down, but that is intentional. Uh, they do that to park it up there at night, which is also why these newer ones with the counterweights are definitely not coasters because all they're doing is just spinning a ring around. There's, there's no really debate on that one. Okay, and then moving on to the competition. Vekoma made some super loops under license from Larson in the 1980s and these were near carbon copies of the Larson Ring of Fire. The last one disappeared in 2012 and is currently in storage in France. And then we would have to mention the kamikaze type rides, as many riders have claimed that the ride experience is very similar to a Larson loop, except that the kamikaze has a higher capacity and a lower maintenance cost. These rides deserve their own full episode, uh, but it is interesting to note that many people were declaring the Larson loop dead at the turn of the millennium due to these rides. However, the Larson loop has proven to be more popular since then and has seen a resurgence in popularity in the early 2010s. And then the high roller. The High Roller was a smaller oval version of the Larson Loop, also made by Larson. This ride took the original concept and made it much more extreme. The ride vehicle traverses the inside of the oval shaped loop, much like a Larson Loop. However, unlike a Larson Loop, the whole loop structure itself rotates, creating a much more intense ride. There's still some of these rides traveling, and one of them is in Europe actually, in Italy. And I think there's also some of them traveling in the US. Moving on to the other facts, we have Elliot here who operated the ride at Six Flags New England named Fireball back in 2017. He has some other facts for us. So like your kitty rides, you sometimes have to know your weight distribution of the ride. You, you don't really have to say balance, um, but you are kind of balancing it. From what I've noticed, if one half of the train is heavier, it'll take more momentum for that train to complete the circuit, as opposed to the lighter half of the train. That's the coolest fact I have. Um, I cannot say how to stall it upside down, but along with the weight distribution, if it is kind of subpar, they didn't do a good job distributing it. It could stall on its own upside down, which it has done a few times when I have worked there. People get very scared thinking that it broke, <laughs> but it's kind of fun <laughs> and funny. Like a large roller coaster, at least Fireball had two danger zones. So we did locks in the morning, similar <laughs> to how we do locks at Cedar Point. And it also has two fire extinguishers. <laughs> Very cool. Um, it takes <laughs> it takes two people to operate a Larson loop. At least the Six Flags ones do. I think most do. I can't remember if there were two people at Indiana Beach. There's I think just there one. Was. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah. I think they, the fireball they, they can ones. They get away with one. Yeah. Yeah, they can get away with one. I'm sure. Is it safe that way? Eh. Yeah. Um, I don't know about the IOE program ones. They probably have an enable knowing IOE. Oh yeah. Um, to do maintenance, they usually, the maintenance team, at least at New England, would park it at the top. I am not sure how they do that because the manual ones don't have the, what's it called? Like the, just the function to park at the Freaking top with, thing with the counterweight. Like yeah. yeah, doesn't have a counterweight on the manual. Yeah, yeah, ones. I think there's probably there's probably some manual, manual mode that they do. Like a, another ride I have operated, Top Thrill Dragster. These things don't like the rain. They, <laughs> they make a very loud squealing sound and it, it's uh, not good. Yeah could yeah. also hydro plead. it can't make the full circuit in the rain mm. 
So who would have thought a Larson Loop and Topsville Dragster are actually very similar rides? <laughs> they are. Um, some of them got some reliability issues. <laughs> wow, exactly the so... same. The debate on if these rides are coasters has long been ongoing. Personally, I can see the argument for the manually controlled ones being coasters. However, I personally do not consider them ones. But there is no debate that the ones with counterweights, such as all of the IOE ones, are 100% controlled all the time and are definitely not coasters. In a Twitter poll I conducted leading up to this video, 89% of you said that they are not coasters and only 11% of you said that they are. So for the time being, it seems like the general opinion is that they are not coasters. And in Pakistan, a very special Superloop ride operated for some years. It was built by an unknown company and operated at the Aladdin Amusement Park as Ring of Fire. Unlike the Larson models which build up momentum to complete the layout, these rides get lifted up slowly to the top of the loop and then let them free fall back and forth until the rides come to a complete stop. And then finally, Larson also uses the frame of a Larson loop in their hubless wheel Ferris wheel. So far, only one of these has been built, and it's at Mega Park in Quebec, Canada. And that is about all we have for our facts on the Larson loop and various similar models. Uh, these rides are definitely interesting. I personally have only ridden two fireball models, uh, the one at Indiana Beach and then a traveling one, and I absolutely hated both of them. Um, I definitely am going to give one of the newer models a chance at some point, uh, but they are definitely not my favorite rides. Uh, Alex, I believe this is one of these flat rides that you've never been on, is that correct? Yes, correct. Well, in Europe we barely have these things. I actually saw one made by Vekoma, but I was really young and I was intimidated by the loud sound of it, so I didn't ride it. Yeah, that's definitely a thing with these. The, the sound they make is very distinctive and very noticeable. And it, it really is kind of the classic American fairground comp you know, combination. It's an older Larson loop and an older zipper together. Uh, it, it kind of is like the flagship of a sketchy American fairground. If it doesn't have those two, it's not a, it's not a good fair. <laughs> um, I, I definitely would like to ride one of the ones that doesn't have the over-the-shoulder fireball restraints. I think those definitely look a lot more enjoyable. Um, and as far as counting them as coasters, I still don't. But uh, I, after researching this video, I can definitely see the argument for a lot of them being coasters. Just just not the IOE ones with the counterweights. And you can see the counterweights, they're, they're kind of a big metal block on the opposite side. They're pretty easy to notice. If you see those, it's, it's, not a, it's not a coaster for sure. But, but the other ones, maybe, maybe. There's, there's a bit of an argument for them. But I do think that concludes this video. Um, if there is a Larson Loop at your home park, which if you live in the U.S., there probably is, especially if it is a Six Flags park or if it is Valley Fair, then I would definitely recommend at least trying it. Ride it once. See if you like it if you've never been on one before. Uh, they are very different rides uh, to a lot of other rides out there. And uh, some people really, really like them. Um, and maybe if you ever work at that park and it's manually controlled, well, congratulations. It might be one of your favorite rides to operate, as it is for Elliot. Uh, I think that does conclude this video, though. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.